Are you tired of putting in all your personal information and life business on the internet just to make a purchase? Or how about having to change your password every 90 days because these companies that keep your password keep on getting breached and it's like my identity keeps getting stolen because of you, Target. Or what about using the internet and being afraid of being censored or deplatformed, put into Facebook jail? Aren't all those things kind of annoying? And maybe you never thought about that before, but now you're thinking about it, you're like, yeah, yeah, I don't wanna get my information out anymore. Companies just harvest your data and your personal information and just sell it for a profit, right? Under the guise of a free social media app or a free insert whatever subject here app, right? But what if there was a new internet, a new internet that gave the power back to the people and an internet that you can invest in and make some big bucks because we're still in its infancy stage. We will also do some live investing. I will invest in one of these, you know, companies I talked to you about later on and we will do it together. If all that sounds good to you, please stick around because we are talking about Web 3.0. Keep it locked, it's Crystal with the Cash Compass. If you did not know, there are actually three iterations of the web and you and I are actually on web 2.0 right now. And honestly, it's not really a big deal, but web 1.0 was basically whoever was posting information, you couldn't really do anything with it. You couldn't really interact with it, right? It was just there. But we're on web 2.0 now and this is basically where, you know, we are the creators. We share content and we also can interact with that content. So I post this video and y'all tell me this sucked so web 3.0 is all about decentralization and you might have heard that word before because it's a very big buzzword in the crypto community decentralization is what we seem to be moving towards right the path of decentralized we no longer want to be ruled and controlled by mega corporations by big government it just seems like people especially the younger generations we're appreciating a little bit more independence and a little bit more privacy Decentralization means that there won't be any big company trying to control the platform. Like we are the platform now, right? We own rights to our content. If I post something on the internet right now and Facebook or YouTube doesn't like it, guess what? It's out of there, right? It's later for me. In the decentralized web, I own it. When I post it, it's me posting it. There's no copy being made. Right now it's like Facebook makes a copy of my content and posts it. It will be mine, I own it. So they cannot really censor you, take things away from you, and muffle you. What's interesting about this too is that user data is not kept with these companies, okay? So that could be good and bad. When you're trying to get on the internet and you don't know your password, right now Target, Amazon, whoever has your password stored somewhere. And if you just answer some security questions or do whatever you have to do, they will provide that password for you. In the web 3.0, nobody is holding that information, which I, don't know if that's true or not, right? Because it's like, if no one's holding it, then how do they know the password's correct? I don't know. But taking it at face value, if these companies do not hold your information, then if you lose your password, you're out of luck. So in Web 3.0, the user actually controls who can see it, when it's deleted, when it's added, who makes money off of this data. Privacy is actually automatic and built into the system. They want to create an anonymous web which can be, like I said, good or bad, I'm gonna get into that. But because privacy is automatic and created into the system, your identity is pretty much kept private. I personally love the idea of Web 3.0, but there are some challenges. The main one being that I don't think that governments want us to be decentralized. I don't think that governments or these big companies, for example, want to let go of our personal information because our personal information is extremely profitable. And that's not to say that they won't try to find a new way to profit off of Web 3.0, right? Because we never used to profit off the internet at all. It was nothing but TV ads, radio ads, and we transformed from that to selling people's personal information. So this might bring about a new transformation and a new way to make money online. Um, but I do think that these companies have gotten pretty comfortable with keeping our information and it would have to be a totally new um, business model for them to profit off of Web 3.0. Another thing that can get tricky about investing, you know, maybe prematurely or things are in its infancy is that something might be popping right now, but it might not be popping next week. Okay. Ask MySpace. If you were to like, let's say you, let's say we went back in the day, right? And MySpace was public and so was Facebook and all these things, but MySpace was the pioneers and you stuck with MySpace because you were like, Hey, I like MySpace. They, this is new. This is great. It sounds good. I'm gonna put all my money into MySpace. Right. And you ignore Facebook because they came second. Well, now look, Facebook is a household name and you 
probably, you might ask some kids these days, maybe they were born in 2005 or something, they're gonna have no clue my space is. Okay, um, so it's really important that if you're going to make these kind of investments, understand that they are risky and that you need to keep up with them to make sure that these companies are still doing things that are in line with their business model, in line with what they are, their vision is, and it's still in line with making you money. <laughs> but I wonder if people will be on board with this, especially because I feel like the government is going to twist it and make it seem like, oh, decentralized means they're going to be selling crack on the web 3.0 and you're it's dangerous like you know they might flip it like that and scare people out of using it like they're trying to scare people out of multiple things we're not gonna get into okay so there's still a lot to kind of figure out but if you're okay with you know betting a couple of hundred dollars why not do that because if you're right this can grow exponentially and if you're wrong well that's kind of the name of the game of investing, so you kind of get over it. So you made it this far, and now you're probably wondering, how can I make money off of this, okay? Like I said, it is still in its infancy stage, but there are companies and corporations and startups that are putting money into this, and I will name a few of the most popular ones. So starting with Polkadot. So if you haven't heard about Polkadot, it is basically a, another coin, another cryptocurrency but it's actually really leading the way in Web 3.0 technology. So if you go on Coinbase, and I'll, like I said, I'll be investing, we'll be investing together. If you go on Coinbase, you'll basically see Polkadot. This is the coin. It is currently at $50.77 at the time of this recording. When I was actually planning this video, it was at $46 or so. So a pretty nice gain in just a few days, even though it's down today. Um, and what I like about any of these apps is that you can pretty much get a lot of the information that you need on the app to make your decision right now, right? So right now, most people are buying it 6.5% buy 33.5% sell. People are typically holding it for 21 days. All right. So that sounds good. But do we want to get more information? You know, there's community updates, there's news. So, and then there's also, if you kind of get some information, so if you want to know what Polkadot is, right? Protocol designed to allow unrelated blockchains to securely talk to each other. And I'm gonna stop right there because it's gonna get too much. Basically, Polkadot is not a competitor of Ethereum. You might have heard that if you are into the crypto space, but they are in the white papers itself, which is not meant for the weak. But in the white papers itself, it says they are not competing with Ethereum. So one of the founders of Ethereum actually founded Polkadot as well. So it's not meant to compete. It's supposed to complement um, and kind of connect all of these different cryptocurrencies and blockchains together, right? I'm gonna have a whole separate video about blockchain, metaverse, NFTs, all of that. So if you're interested in, in the future of money, then you're gonna wanna subscribe. So basically it will kind of connect all these different blockchains without needing an intermediary, although I do believe that the Polkadot would be the intermediary. Um, but the perks about Polkadot over maybe Ethereum is that it's a little bit, it's faster, so it's more scalable. It doesn't and they require as much energy. I want to make it known that you are buying coins when you buy Polkadot, right? You're, it's your stake in the company, kind of like maybe like your stock if you bought a stock, right? So it's your stake in the company. It's not a cryptocurrency. I think people get confused because there's coins on here. They're like altcoins or whatever. This is not a cryptocurrency. You're buying these coins as an investment. You're putting your stake into Polkadot. If you are somebody who's really into like the kind of IT and the coding and all of that, you can be rewarded um, by putting a stake in. But the way you would invest in this and make a profit is as it kind of gains notoriety and popularity, more people will be interested into Polkadot and pour their resources into it. it that does sound like a Ponzi scheme, but this can go up in value by itself without any more users, right? People have to just kind of recognize that it's going to be more widely used, recognize that it's the new technology, and then kind of um, use it. So we don't necessarily need people to buy the coins, but as more people buy the coins, of course, that pushes the price up. The next one is Kusama, which is actually affectionately known as Polkadot's Canary. And that's a reference of Canary on the in the coal mine, right? So this is a much expedited version of Polkadot. If you have more of a risk appetite, you can try to use Pol um, Kusama, sorry, to actually develop your 3.0 whatever applications, whatever it is that you have. Okay, um, it's the Canary in the coal mine because a lot of people who do have a risk appetite, they are developing on Kusama first, and then maybe bringing their talents over to Polkadot after. So it's kind of giving us a warning and letting us know what's in the pipeline for the future of the web. Now they have recently kind of outlaid something called parachains. This is very technical. I don't want to get too technical in this video. So if there's any more information that you want to know, just let me know. But um, 
basically that really makes the internet much more scalable, much more energy efficient, kind of like Polkadot, like I said, it's an extension. Both of these companies mission is to help develop and propel the blockchain, really make all these different projects people are working on interconnect and work together, which is why I picked them because everybody's going to come up with their own project. We need to find a way to integrate everything in a seamless and quick way. Another thing that you might have been more familiar with is Facebook or AKA Meta. Um, I'm not suggesting anybody invest in it, um, but what I will say is that they're thinking ahead, they're forward thinking, right? So they're thinking about the metaverse, which is a whole 3D idea of the internet. Facebook is pre pre preparing for either way, right? They already have their 2.0 web, right? The web 2.0 realm where they're pretty much dominating. And then they're trying to set themselves up for this metaverse where it's going to be 3D everything, decentralized everything, and they're already getting themselves prepared. So if you're somebody who's maybe a little bit more risk adverse and investing in companies like Polkadot and Kusama are not comfortable to you because you do feel Feel maybe it's a little bit too new if you want you could put in a small stake right you don't have to go throwing in thousands of dollars i'm only gonna put a couple hundred in when i purchase these stocks in a second but um yeah why not just put in a little bit and if you feel comfortable with facebook then you could put in a little bit more but at least you have some sort of skin in the game okay we are going to buy polka dot it is fifty dollars and fifty one cents i am going to buy polka dot um Let's put $150. Actually, let's switch it. I'm gonna buy three. Okay, I'm gonna buy three of them. So if you didn't know, this changes if you wanna, how much money it's gonna cost versus how many coins you're gonna get. So I'm gonna get three, that's it, just something calm. Let's preview that, three dot. It's going to come up to $158 in total. The fees for buying cryptocurrency is honestly ridiculous, but let's buy it now. And we're done. That is purchased. I kind of want this to be relatable, so I didn't want to dish out a whole bunch of hundreds of dollars because this is to show you that you can get started with a hundred dollars. You can get started with ten dollars, but just get started. You know, at least buy one coin, at least read one white paper, at least do one research. You know, project on something you're interested in because it could be the difference between a hundred thousand air and a millionaire. All right. What do you think about Web 3.0? Definitely let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe. And if you're still here and you know what to do, go ahead and binge watch me. Until next time, keep your money up.